Hey, it's me, MLB. Here's chapter 42 of Future, and this one is titled Manifestation. A few weeks went by, and Chi and Ginny would find time to sneak away and hold hands. This was their little thing to show that they loved each other, and it calmed Chisuki down. Whenever he was feeling overwhelmed or jealous of Ginny playing with the others, he would ask her to hold hands in secret for a bit, and then he'd be okay again. He just needed that reassurance. Soshi was really loving being with Chi and Ginny, but he loved being with Ginny the most. She was gentle and kind, and he thought she was wonderful. One afternoon, he felt a bit strange. His hands would go really cold all of a sudden, and his palms would itch. It scared him a little, so he pulled Ginny aside at lunchtime and told her what he was feeling. Um, I don't know, so maybe we should tell a teacher, she said. Don't know what to do. Um, but I'm scared, he said as he looked at his hands. Ginny, I, I can feel it happening again, he said, panicking. It's okay, so it's okay, she reached out and hugged him. Look, he said with fear. Look at my hands. They were turning blue. Ginny, please help me, he cried. Without thinking, Ginny reached for his hands and held them in hers. They were stone cold. Just then, Chisuki walked around the corner and saw Ginny holding Soshi's hands. He froze and then turned and fled. Ginny just saw the back of him as he took off in the opposite direction, but she didn't understand what had caused him to run. She was more worried for Soshi. I'm taking you to teach her, she said in a panic as Soshi's hands got colder, dragging him back towards the classroom. No, wait, he said, yanking his hands away and pointing his palms at the ground. Ice encased jewels fell from his palms and Ginny screamed. Her scream was loud enough that the still running Chisuki heard it and immediately stopped in his tracks. That was Ginny. I have to save her. He turned back and bolted towards her cry. Ginny backed away from Soshi. So, so what's happening? She called to him. I don't know. His terrified voice called back as more iced jewels fell. It's making my hands feel better though. Is, is it your quirk? Ginny called back, suddenly having a light bulb moment. Just then, Chisuki arrived on scene and jumped in front of Ginny, squaring off with Soshi. You can't steal her from me, he roared. She's mine, we're in love. Ginny stumbled back and fell over on her backside. Chi, what are you saying? I saw you holding hands with Soshi, he called over his shoulder angrily to her. But I'm not letting him take you away from me. No, Chi, I was helping him. Something's happening with his hands, Ginny yelled. Chisuki looked at Soshi's hands and suddenly realised there were ice and jewels scattered all over the ground in front of him. Oh, he gasped. What is that? Um, I think it's my quirk, Soshi replied, hearing Ginny say it. I need to get a teacher, Ginny said to Chi, standing back up and placing a hand on his shoulder. Please stay here and watch Soshi, I'll be back. Chi nodded authoritatively and Ginny ran off. Oi, Chi growled at Soshi. You're not allowed to hold hands with Ginny, okay? Well, why not? Soshi asked, balling his hands into fists. Because it's our sign and our sign only. We love each other and you can't love her. But, but I do love her, Soshi replied angrily, his confidence boosted by the power that he felt in his hands. Oh... I'll punch you if you do it again, Chi threatened. And, and I'll punch you back, Soshi said, narrowing his eyes. Chi seethed. Soshi was standing up to him. This had never happened before. Chi felt hot. His anger at Soshi's defiance and the fear of losing his love, Ginny, pushing his emotions to the limit. Suddenly, everywhere that had become sweaty from his run burst into flames, crackling as small explosions leapt from his paws. Soshi screamed in terror and threw his palms out towards Chi instinctively. Iced jewels hurled towards the exploding blonde, hitting him in the arms. Chi screeched and jumped back as the freezing cold ice connected with him. The heat of his explosions melted the ice instantly, but exposed the rough cut jewels as they sliced his skin like a knife. Chi deactivated his quirk and grabbed at his arm where the jewels had cut him, just as Ginny returned with the teacher. Boys! the teacher gasped. What is going on? Jewels and puddles of water surrounded Soshi and Chi. Chi was holding one of his arms as the other one bled. Ginny gasped and ran to his side. Chi, what happened? Why are you bleeding? Soshi threw ice and colour stones at me, Chi pouted angrily. 
I, I didn't mean to, Sashi cried. He turned into fire. The teacher was highly confused. Okay, please come with me to the nurse's office and we will ring your mummies and daddies, she said, taking Soshi's hand and walking him away. Wait, Soshi said, pulling his hand from hers and bending down to pick up a gem. Ginny, this is for you, he said, holding out a deep red stone. It's my very first pretty stone that I made and I want you to keep it. Ginny gasped and took it gently in her hands. Oh, it's so pretty, Soshi. Thank you. Chi was seething again. Why did Soshi always have to give her special things? He grabbed for Ginny's hand and held it tight. Ginny squeaked and her eyes shot up to the teacher. Oh no, he's holding my hand in front of people's. What will happen? The teacher smiled and asked them to follow her as she re-held Soshi's hand. Chi marched behind the teacher and Soshi, holding Ginny's hand tightly. He wasn't scared anymore. He needed to show off their love proudly. As all three waited for their parents to come and pick them up, Chi pulled Ginny aside. I don't want you to have that pretty stone because I didn't give it to you, he said angrily. Ginny scowled and gripped the jewel tighter. No, she said defiantly. I'm not throwing it away. Oh dear, looks like there's a bit of a jealous streak in Shisuke. Stay tuned for the next chapter coming tomorrow.